Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Remade, Rebooted, or Retired. My name is Canadian Guy, and I must say, long time no see, eh? Hopefully, we'll get back into the swing of things to get more of these out. As always, the industry has blurred the lines as to what exactly constitutes as a remake, or even a remaster. So, let's break down what they mean for this specific video. A remaster is a modern take on a game, which includes improved graphics, gameplay, and so on. It can be a simple HD port all the way to a full recreation of assets, like the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy or the Spiral Reignited Trilogy, or even Medieval. A reboot, however, is when the game starts on a fresh, clean slate. Sure, they may follow a basic path of their predecessor, like the Final Fantasy VII quote-unquote remake, but it's fleshed out and changed greatly from the original. Or it could be a complete change of story and gameplay style. Whatever the case may be, reboots usually require a lot more work. And of course, if it's retired, well... <laughs> With that all the way, let's get into the show. Uh -huh. Banjo-Kazooie, a game that has held legendary status for platformers for many years with Nintendo fans and in the gaming industry in general. The Baron Bird Wombo Combo was created by the equally legendary studio Rare. However, Rare's humble beginnings started as Ultimate Play the Game. Being a British-based company, they created some hits for a console that was popular over in Europe called the ZX Spectrum. It basically was one of those weird home computers that could only play games. However, Ultimate Play of the Game knew that the console would eventually become a dead end. It wasn't really spreading across the world, and it started to even become stale in the UK. So they imported a console called the Famicom, which started to gain mass popularity in Japan. Now, somehow, Ultimate Play of the Game figured the console out and then was able to decode it. This task was originally seen as almost impossible. So the creators of the console revealed to them that they were going to be importing the Famicom console to North America and gave them a large budget to create games for that console and to try and develop and release the games around the time when the console launches and throughout its entire life cycle. This console that released in North America was renamed as the Nintendo Entertainment System or the NES. During this time, Ultimate Play the Game was eventually changed to Rare, Designs on the Future, but eventually would just become Rare. Rare released gaming hit after hit after hit, like Battletoads, which literally was ported to everything possible back in the day. If they could have ported it to a calculator, they would have. But then, more legendary titles started to come out from the studio that would stand the test of time to even today, like Donkey Kong Country, Killer Instinct, and 007 Goldeneye, all very different, but amazing games. Rare was on a roll that no one could stop, and just when you thought that it was impossible to produce any more golden eggs, in 1998, they created the Bear and Bird Wombo Combo Banjo-Kazooie for the Nintendo 64. Banjo-Kazooie is a 3D open-world platforming and collect-a-thon adventure game that shook the world to its core. Graphically, there was almost nothing like it for its time. You play as Banjo, a bear who's kind and goofy, and Kazooie, who is a sassy jerk. The dynamic works, I promise you. You don't necessarily play them separately, but they work together as a unit. Banjo is the main adventurer, but Kazooie helps him in almost every aspect from the confines of his blue backpack. She helps him jump, swim, attack, shoot eggs, fly, you name it. She's there to help Banjo. The story is fairly basic, but quite interesting. Tootie, Banjo's little sister, and apparently great piccolo player, was out and about having a good time. While this was happening, Gruntilda, an evil and ugly witch who speaks in riddle and rhyme, discovered that, shockingly, she was not the most beautiful person. I mean, did she really have to ask? Yikes. But anyway, she found out that Tootie was much, much more beautiful than she. She grew angry and decided to abduct Tootie to steal her beauty. Once Banjo actually wakes up and discovers that his sister has been taken, Banjo and of course Kazooie go on an adventure to go save Banjo's sister. 
You roam around the different 3D wide worlds finding a number of collectibles, but the main one you are looking for are these golden jiggies. Golden jiggies are used for unlocking the next levels. Some are out in the open, while others are well hidden throughout the world. You also unlock and find new abilities and skills that produces a diverse set of gameplay mechanics throughout the big and open worlds. The banter between characters, especially between Bottles and Kazooie, is always hilarious, creating great moments even outside of the gameplay. To make the game even more fun, you can collect these skulls that will allow the shaman mumbo jumbo to turn banjo into different creatures that allow him access to areas that he couldn't previously get to adding even more fun and excitement to the levels the game was critically acclaimed across the board and is considered as one of the best games to have ever come out on the nintendo 64. the game scored a massive 9.2 out of 10 on average with the critics and has won countless amounts of awards but rare was not quite done yet with the baron bird wombo combo as before even the first game was released least, the second game was already in development. Banjo-Tooie, the sequel to the original, came out two years later once again for the Nintendo 64. After Grunty was defeated, she was trapped in a hole with a giant rock placed on top of it. However, Grunty's sisters show up and destroy the rock and bring her back to the land of the living. Mumbo sees this and warns Banjo and Bottles. However, Grunty shows up and destroys Banjo and Kazooie's house, trying to get revenge. Mumbo, Banjo, and Kazooie escape, but Bottles is legitimately killed. Like, dead. Dead, dead. Mumbo Jumbo wants Gruntilda to pay for what she had done, and Banjo and Kazooie agree to go after her once again. The gameplay is very similar to the original with some features swapped around. Some collectibles were changed, abilities switched around and adjusted, but on the whole played very, very much like the original. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The game still scored a whopping 9 out of 10 on average with the critics and was my personal favorite as a kid. But then... Things went for a turn. See, people expected Banjo 3 to be next. It was even hinted in the game by Gruntilda herself that she would be back for Banjo 3 at the end of the second game. But Banjo 3 never really happened? Well, kind of? In 2003, Banjo-Kazooie came to GBA as Grunty's Revenge. It was a fine game, but didn't hit the bar quality like the mainline games did. It definitely reflected in its score as well, scoring a 7.2 out of 10 on average with the reviewers. Now, 7.2 is still good, but definitely a huge step down from a 9.1 average. Then, Banjo-Pilot would come out to GBA two years later, a Banjo-Kazooie racing game that was originally supposed to be a Diddy Kong racing game, but was repackaged into a Banjo game. The game the game scored a mediocre 6.8 out of 10, an even bigger fall from grace from the original two games. But during Xbox's 2006 E3 presentation, a seemingly brand new Banjo-Kazooie was in the works, with more collectibles, modern graphics, and everything you could ask for. We even got the lovely tag of Banjo is back. But little did we know, it should have said something more along the lines of this. <laughs> then in 2008, the game that was allegedly advertised here, that everyone assumed to be Banjo 3E, was released and was one of the most controversial titles to have ever come out. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, a brand new take on Banjo Kazooie and its gameplay. The game took the classic game formula and threw most of it out the window, and in its place was replaced with car customization and missions. The game received mixed reviews across the board, and it did not resonate with fans at all. People wanted a Banjo Kazooie open world platforming collectathon, and Nuts and Bolts wasn't really hitting that at all. Now, according to Steve Mails, the drastic change was due to the thought that that the Xbox audiences would prefer this style of gameplay over a typical platformer. The game still scored a respectable 7.9 out of 10 with the critics, but this would be one of the last times that we saw Banjo-Kazooie. So, is Banjo-Kazooie still relevant today? Would people pick the game up and put the money down on it? Yes, 100%, absolutely. It would be an ultimate comeback. But I think now, more than ever, would be the perfect timing. 12 years later, Banjo-Kazooie made quite an interesting comeback, not in the way that everyone expected, in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, still considered to be one of the best and shocking reveals and arguably the biggest fighting game of all time, this reveal in itself has brought life and ultimately hope back to Banjo fans so that we may see the Baron Bird Wombo Combo once more. So, should Banjo-Kazooie be remade, rebooted, or retired?
rebooted with an asterisk. So this one seemed like a shoe in for being remade. I mean, come on. The game was perfect as it is. Why would you reboot it? Well, here's the thing. Though this game is older, it did not fall the wayside like Crash, Spyro, or Medieval. The original games are very much easily accessible for most people. When the Rare Replay was announced, it came with Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, and Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bleh. It is also easily accessible on the Xbox Arcade, which can be played on any Xbox 360 or Xbox One, and they are also on the Game Pass, which means you can play them on the Series S or Series X line of consoles. There are so many ways and opportunities to play the original Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, simply doing a remake like Crash and Spyro is almost seen as kind of redundant. Also, the actual graphics of the game itself hold up ridiculously well, especially with just a basic up-res port. The original graphics also add a charm and goofiness of what the original characters look like and the levels, especially paired with their non-commutative speech and sounds. So, if they were to bring Banjo and Kazooie back, a minor reboot would be more fitting for the franchise, keeping it to the open-world collect-a-thon platforming aspect, but with a bit more of modern twists. It could still follow the original basic story as the originals, but have new mechanics, more levels, more fleshed out story, etc. Think like the Ratchet & Clank movie remake that was a reboot kind of of the original game, but with more content. Here's the best part too. The originals, like I said, are still easily accessible and still look good for today's standards. So if you're not a fan of the reboot, you still can easily play the originals. Now the reason why I put an asterisk in the rebooted title is because a straight up sequel could also work as well. Doesn't even need to be called Banjo 3E either, just an entirely brand new Banjo game continuing where they left off from 2E. However, if Xbox decide to remake the originals, like how Crash and Spyro were remade, I wouldn't complain either. I would still love it and support it. I'm just down for any and all Banjo-Kazooie content. Overall, the Baron Bird Wombo Combo should come back in a mainline series, whether it be in terms of a new game, a remake, or a reboot. A Crash and Spiral style remake seems a little redundant at this point due to the amount of ways to access and play the original games, but again, if they decide to go with that, I would still love it nonetheless.